higher or lower risk, uh, more or less cost. I know I've got lots of questions in there, so obviously we could have a few more than a couple of minutes. Um, but if even if you want to just take one part of it and, and answer yes. that. Uh, business relationship um, and the, the primary uh, indicator of a franchise would be that the franchisee doesn't own the business. What they own um, is, is the right to use the franchisor's logo and, and trademark. So you, you don't own the, the, the business per se. What you have is um, a license to use the, the trademark of the franchisor. And in New Brunswick, there, there's recently been um, the Franchises Act. It was uh, passed in 2007, but it's only been proclaimed into force in February of this year of, of 2011. So it defines what a franchise is, and it defines it very broadly so that, in fact, um, some relationships with the, which the parties might not have considered to be a franchise is caught by the definition of a franchise in the Franchises Act. So it's quite a broad. I think uh, one of the, the biggest values that a franchisor brings to the table is giving someone the ability um, to get into a business without necessarily worrying about the entire structure of the business. And we call that the core. The core being the brand, the core being the design of the financial instrument, uh, the core being advertising. In our business, the core being the propertyguys.com website. Just being able to build that out and look after that kind of thing for someone, um, work on the marks, work on the angle of the business, uh, return on investment, that kind of stuff, and allow someone to um, exploit that for us in a partnership type of format because at the end of the day there's only a few different ways to, to grow and to grow a business from Moncton and open units you know we have over a hundred across the country so to individually go to all these cities and towns and open these things would be very capital intensive so instead uh, the easiest and best way to expand our particular thing was develop it here locally, get a strong uh, understanding of what we wanted it to be, uh, invest in protecting it as a brand and as a business system, then convincing other like-minded folks um, that we had a viable business and something that they should partner on us with, and then we do the structure of the partnership under a franchise agreement that really allows uh, folks to know what their part of the arrangement is and what our part of the arrangement is. And when you can balance both sides of that equation, you have what's called a good franchisee and franchisor relationship, which I got to say is one of the most uh, difficult things to achieve because franchisees are very entrepreneurial people. And um, so what often happens in a franchisor franchisee type of system is you kind of butt heads as the entrepreneurs. I want it that way, I'm the franchisor, you're the franchisee, you want it that way. And that does cause uh, some strain, but nonetheless it's kind of um, par for, for the course. And when you get into franchising your idea or your business or your concept, that's what you're signing up for. Um, you of course want to do the right thing and always provide for your partners and, and that kind of thing, but at the end of the day there is that relationship. Um, as explained under the legal definition, because a franchisor needs to protect his marks and his system and everything, and he's lending it to someone for a certain period of time. Uh, we lend for folks up to 15 years if the marriage is happy, but we can call it quits together after five, or really we can suggest that we're calling it quits after five. And uh, so, so that's what governs it. I've never been in the franchise business before. Um, we launched Property Guys here in Moncton. I didn't know much about the franchise business other than I did understand the general concept of being able to get into business with someone mm -hmm. and do my part and they do their part and that's the franchise or franchisee relationship as I, as I child. And they change your <laughs> world a little bit. And um, got to stay home for a while, went back to work part time um, with second cup because the franchise owner knew my gifting experience from the body shop franchise that I had worked for but didn't own. So um, he was looking to get out um, and my son was looking for me to go back to work because I was becoming um, everything to him, his teacher, his hockey coach, his soccer kid, and he wanted me to have my own life. 
Um, so this was my new child. I um, took that store over. Um, it was something that I was already passionate about. Um, like every true maritimer, it's always great to have a job that you can drink on all day long. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they encouraged that there, coffee only. Um, so I had, I had retail management experience. I'd also had, I had been a food broker before retail and, and worked in that, so I had some uh, food and restaurant experience. Um, like most of us, we worked in the restaurant business going through school, so I had that to draw on. And so collectively, it was a good brand for me um, to combine all my talents and skill sets that I had learned over the years. Any, any, like, along those lines, like as to how you got involved in, in everything else? Okay, so for me, um, some franchises you can sell back to the company, other franchises you can sell to other people if you want to sell them. For me, Mark's Rick Warehouse is only available to sell back to the corporate office or it's to be retained within our families. And everything's different. Subways are different, Donald's are different, uh, I'm sure Second Cups are as well, Hampton Inns or whatever, there's all kinds of franchises around. Um, and that's fine with me. I, I, right now, Marks is buying back a lot of their franchisees. Um, there's 300 and some odd stores in Canada right now. We're also owned by Canadian Tire. Some of you may or may not know that, so we're under the umbrella of Canadian Tire. So they're purchasing back a lot of them. Um, the Miramichi store just sold, for example, um, Fredericton just sold, and the Charlottetown Summerside PEI stores just both sold back to uh, corporate office. We have that opportunity to do with that as well, but I'm just not ready just yet. And the dollar's just not quite right. Um, I love what I do, um, so I think that's probably key. None of my kids are interested in the business. It has nothing to do with whether I'm going to pass it on to them or not. It, eventually, if I want to sell it, I'll sell it back to corporate office, and that's just fine with me. It'll be a corporately owned store. Right now, we can give back to the community. We take care of an awful lot of people in, in Moncton, New Brunswick, and Dieppe, and I don't know how many people know anything about us, but we take care of an awful lot of, of people, um, different um, sporting events, different hockey, ringette, doesn't matter what it is, soccer, etc. So I really love that aspect of the business. Um, for, for me, Dusty, my husband, was selling carpet, and I was selling real estate, and we just really weren't totally happy with what we were doing at the time, and and so we sold uh, our first house that we bought for $30,000 and did a little bit of fix up on it and uh, sold it for $50,000 and we sold his Jeep, which he loved for five grand to get her down payment for Mark's Work Warehouse. Mm -hmm. Today, if anybody emails me, they know my address is Cherokee at NBNet, whatever. That's because we sold my husband's Jeep to get the five, first $5,000 <laughs> to open up the store. We literally had to squat. Mm -hmm. But we had passion and energy, and again, we were like 24, 25 years of age, so we were ready to rock and roll. So that's where we sit. Maybe you would like to share with everyone as to what were some of the uh, characteristics of a franchise that made you decide, well, maybe that's not for me. Yeah, when, when I decided to go into business, uh, I happened to be looking through my professional uh, um, magazine and I saw an accounting franchise and I thought, oh, well, this sounds great. Uh, you know, and I knew basically what a franchise was about. They're selling you a system. Uh, and I thought, well, that's great. I'll have a lot of software already. Uh, I won't have to choose it. It'll be given to me and uh, so I'll have my system. Uh, I wasn't so keen on having to pay royalties for the rest of my life, but uh, you know, that's the trade-off. You pay the franchise fee and the royalties in order to get the, the training in the system. So at that point in the game, I, w I was ready, you know, to, to do that for that trade. Uh, but as I started looking into the franchise and, and talking to them about it, um, I wanted to work as an accountant in Moncton. That was, that was where I wanted to be. And they said, well, the territory is already taken. It was taken by somebody in St. John that wasn't even utilizing Moncton. And so I, I asked that individual, I knew him, and I asked him would he be willing to, to give up, you know, or sell the Moncton territory, and no, he wasn't. So they wanted me to work in northern New Brunswick and Amherst and Truro. Well, I thought, I'm not going to spend all, all day on the road, you know, I'll have no time to work. I'm just going to be driving around. 
So because I couldn't get the territory I wanted, that was, that was one nail in the coffin. And uh, they did agree that they give me a little tiny piece of Moncton where I actually live. But I mean, you know, that was, that was pretty small and that, that just didn't cut it for me. And uh, then when I was out, uh, I was talking to CBDC about financing and I found out that this particular franchise was over the franchise limit for CBDC. So if I wanted my financing, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't get that from them. Uh, so there was another nail in the coffin. Um, so anyway, I decided I was going to take my training from CBDC. They offered it as well, and then I wouldn't have to spend uh, royalties for the rest of my life. So uh, that, that's the story I have. You know, I, when I got investigating everything about it, it just didn't kind of suit what I wanted to do. So uh, it wasn't that the franchise um, type of business wasn't for me, it was that that particular franchise didn't work for me. The clients that are coming to you um, going, should I or shouldn't I? Or are they coming to you after the fact, here's what I'm doing, fill out the paperwork for me? Yeah, um, in New Brunswick, the Franchises Act uh, includes a cooling off period. So um, you're not supposed to, the franchisor is not supposed to take money or um, get the franchisee to sign the agreement until at least 14 days after the, the franchisees had full disclosure. So uh, that's when I often see the franchisee. They'll bring the disclosure document to me and ask me to review it and uh, just give them a legal opinion on, on the provisions. The provisions that are specific to the franchise, so the business, I obviously can't opine on you know, uh, whether or it's a, a good decision to get into this type of business, but there's obviously a lot of uh, legalese involved in these these contracts. It's it's not one agreement. A franchise agreement includes uh, you know a, a whole set of agreements, confidentiality agreements, and and um, so on and so forth. There's sometimes there's financing documents in there as well. Sometimes the, fri uh, the franchisor is going to provide the franchisee with financing. So there's a lot to review. Uh, 14 days is not always long enough, but uh, we we always manage.